Hello, I'm Sonia Manzano, and welcome to today's Read Along, a special story time with PBS Kids. Today, I'm going to read a book entitled A Box Full of Kittens, written by me and illustrated by Matt Phelan. You never know when something wonderful will happen. I should know. I'm Ruthie, and something wonderful once happened to me. It was a regular old day. My puppy had just fixed the antenna on the television set so I could finish watching my favorite show, Superman. I love Superman. I wish I could be Superman. If I were Superman, I could save kittens that got stuck on rooftops in a single bound. I could... There she is, flying around until she hears, Ruthie? It was my mommy interrupting my thoughts. I've got a job for you. Your Aunt Juanita is going to have her baby very soon, and she'd like some company. Why don't you go spend the day with her in case she needs anything? There's Ruthie watching television and her mother interrupting her. But I have to see what happens to Superman, I said. Don't worry, said my brother Willie. He'll be okay. He has to be back before next week's show. <laughs> Willie thought he was a comedian. <sighs> Why can't Willie stay with her, I asked. But then it hit me. If I were the one to get help for Aunt Juanita, I would be a hero, just like Superman. Never mind, I hollered before Willie had a chance to answer. I'll stay with Aunt Juanita. Mommy asked me first. So here, she doesn't want to stay with Aunt Juanita. And here, she decides it's a great idea. I flew out the door, down the steps, two at a time, past Don Felix's bodega, past the man who sold coquito ices, past the piraguero who sold snow cones, into Antoinette's building, up the steps, three at a time, and finally leaped into Antoinette's kitchen. Here's the neighborhood that Ruthie lives in. Is it time for the baby to come? Should I get help, I asked my aunt. Not yet, she said, struggling to kiss me over her big belly. She looked as if she had swallowed a beach ball. But could you go get me a cherry piraga with extra syrup? I really feel like having one. She handed me some money from her purse. And there's the Aunt Juanita with her big belly because she's about to have a baby. I grabbed the money, flew out the door, down the steps, four at a time, onto the street, and ran to the piraguero. I needed a cherry piragua with extra syrup, quick. I gave him the money, grabbed the piragua, ran back into Antoinette's building, flew up the steps, five at a time, and left into Antoinette's kitchen. Well, I asked, handing her the comb, is the baby coming? Do you feel it's time? Should I get help? No, she said between slurps of piragua. I don't feel the baby coming, but I do feel that after I eat this piragua, I'm going to want a coquito. Could you take some money from the coffee can on the shelf and get me one extra large? So here is Ruthie getting the piragua from the guy who sells piragua on the street. And here she is delivering the piragua, but the ant seems to want something else. She wants a coconut icing. I got the money, flew out the door, down the steps, six at a time, out onto the street, past the piraguero, and up to the coquito vendor. Can I have an extra large coquito quick? 
I gave him the money, grabbed the coquito, ran back into my aunt's building, flew up the steps seven at a time, and landed in Antoinette's kitchen in a single bound. How about now? I panted, completely out of breath. Do you think the baby's coming? Do you feel it's time? Should I get help? No, she said, biting into the coquito. I don't feel the baby coming, but I'm beginning to feel hungry for real food. Ay, ay, ay. Could you go to the bodega and get me a piece of queso blanco and pasta de guayaba to go with it? That means white cheese and guava paste in Spanish, in case you didn't know. Tell Don Felix I'll pay him later. Here you can hopefully get a good look at the pictures. I got to Don Felix's store faster than the speed of light. And there she thinks she's going so fast she's almost flying. Could I have a... But before I could finish, he said, Ruthie, you'll never guess. Huh? What? Huh? Guess? I can't. I'm in a hurry, I said. Could I have a... You'll never believe what I have right here, he said, disappearing behind the counter. So here she's. Ruthie's trying to get the special food her aunt wants. But the grocer is going to distract her, I think. What? But there's a baby, I began. Not just one, but three, he said. Huh? He stood up holding a big box. Take a look. Take a look. You'll love it. I can't. I need a piece of... Don Felix opened the lid. Look! I looked. Inside the box were kittens. Three little kittens. I love, 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 love kittens. And here were three tiny mewling kittens. These were almost just born, said Don Felix. I've been waiting for you to come by. I knew you'd want to see them. <gasps> They're beautiful, I said. I couldn't believe my eyes. I knew you'd love them, he said. Why don't you take them outside for some fresh air? So, let's see what happens next. I hugged the box and went out to the sidewalk. The kittens made the tiniest sound I almost couldn't hear unless they got really close. Probably. I put the box on the sidewalk and looked into it. There was a peppy kitten, a mysterious kitten, and a sleepy kitten. I couldn't decide which one to pick up first. I went to pick up the peppy one, but the mysterious kitten gave me such a look. I started to pick her up instead. But then I didn't want the sleepy one to feel left out, so I decided to pick them all up at the same time. That made one climb up onto the top of my head, one crawl up onto my shoulder, and one curl up right inside the crook of my elbow. Look at this funny picture. There's a cat on her head, on her shoulder, her elbow, then, I heard my Aunt Juanita yelling something to me from her third floor window. Now, what do you think the aunt is yelling? The aunt who's just about ready to have a baby. Hmm? Yes, I know, I whispered back loudly. I didn't want to disturb the kittens. These are the cutest kittens in the world. Then my aunt yelled something else. Okay, I said, waving to her. Boy, she must really be hungry, I thought. Be right there. I'm gonna show you the pictures in a minute, don't you worry. Of course, all that yelling upset the kittens. It made the sleepy one snuggle into my neck. The peppy one jumped back into the box and the mysterious one tried to run away. So here, are the kittens jumping every which way? And here is the ant yelling from her window. Okay. 
It was a good thing Officer Vic was coming up the sidewalk because he was able to catch her for me. Thank you, Officer Vic. You're just in time to see these beautiful kittens. Very nice, he said, handing the mysterious kitten back to me. But just as I was about to ask him which kitten he liked best, he started talking into his walkie-talkie and running into Antoinette's building. <gasps> Suddenly, there was a loud noise and all the kittens tried to climb onto my head. <laughs> Don't worry, kittens, I whispered. It's just a siren. You'll hear a lot of those in this city. There's nothing to be afraid of. I tried to calm them down by petting them all at the same time, which is impossible in case you didn't know, because they kept squirming around. So here's the policeman coming for help because he hears Aunt Juanita's yelling from the building. And I saw my father coming down the street. He was walking awfully fast. Hey, Papi, I whispered importantly. Look at these kittens. Esperate, he said. I want you all to try that. Say, esperate. Esperate. And if you haven't guessed, that means wait in Spanish. Wait, I thought. Wait for what? I held a mistake serious looking kitten up into the air to show Poppy, but he ran toward Antoinette's building. That's when I noticed my aunt being helped into the ambulance by Officer Vic. <gasps> the three kittens stared at me, and I stared at the ambulance. Well, said my Poppy as he walked back towards me, it's a good thing Officer Vic was around to help your aunt. <gasps> help my aunt, I said. She's about to have her baby, he answered. N -n now, I asked him. Well, very soon. He stared at the ambulance as they pulled away from the curb. Hey, what have you got there, he asked. Nothing, I said. Just some old kittens. They're Don Felixes. Well, give them back. Now let's go tell your mother that by tonight, there'll be a new member of the family. I dragged myself up the stairs one step at a time. And this is my favorite Matt Phelan illustration because she looks so sad in that big space of stairs. A few days later, I was watching television, not Superman, when my mommy said it was time to visit Aunt Juanita and her new baby named Grace. Great, said my brother. Hey, Ruthie, what's the difference between a baby and a leaky faucet? Before I could answer, he said, you can turn off a faucet, get it? <laughs> Before I had a chance not to laugh, my mother asked, why the long face, Ruthie? Honestly, let's go. And I like this picture too. She looks sad that she missed her great moment of saving the day. We got to Antoinette's apartment along with the rest of the neighborhood. The party started immediately. My father searched for a good Spanish station on the radio. My mother made coffee and served the cake. Officer Vic smiled at everything everybody said, even though I could tell he didn't understand much Spanish. Don Felix brought a whole salami. I hadn't brought anything. Besides, everyone was making such a fuss that I couldn't even get near baby Grace. I was just about to give up and go downstairs when I heard my Aunt Juanita say, oh, I swear. It was that Coquito Ruthie brought me that made this baby finally come. Oh, this is a really long, big illustration. I knew it was something you ate, said my aunt's husband, Frank. Some things never change, said my great uncle. Why, I remember when my wife just had to Chew on a piece of sugar cane right before she had our first son. 
Now I remember your great aunt Isabella begging for coconut milk right before she gave birth, added my other great uncle. And if you don't think it's right climbing a palm tree in the middle of the night, think again. So here are the two old-ish uncles remembering how it was when they lived in Puerto Rico. And there he is as a young man getting sugar cane for his wife. And here he is as a young man getting a coconut down from the tree for his wife. Everybody laughed but me. It was a good thing Ruthie was around, Antoinette declared. She really saved the day. Ruthie, since you were so helpful with your super fast deliveries, you should be the first to hold the baby. Everybody said, yes, of course, and stepped aside to let me through. My aunt put the baby in my arms and showed me how to hold her so her head wouldn't fall back. Did you ever hold a newborn baby? And their heads are very floppy. You have to hold their heads up. Everybody said yes, of course, and stepped aside to let me through. My aunt put the baby in my arms and showed me how to hold her so her head wouldn't fall back. Grace's eyes were shut, but her hands fluttered a little as she got comfortable. She had the prettiest, newest fingers I had ever seen. Here's the aunt putting the baby in Ruthie's arms, or getting ready to. I'm show you the last illustration in just a minute, right after I read it. Hello, Grace, I said. She opened her eyes. Everyone gasped and stood on their tiptoes to get a better look. Then everyone sighed and settled down as she closed them again. Then Grace made the tiniest sound I almost couldn't hear unless I got really close, which I did, because I knew she only wanted me to hear it. And I finally felt super. Here's the last illustration. Next to them, there's a little one there, but this is the most important one. And uh, I bet the baby's going like, which is the kind of the sound that the little kittens made at the beginning of the book. And Ruthie finally felt super. Anyway, the end. So, that's a book that I really enjoyed writing, A Box Full of Kittens. I hope you enjoyed hearing it. Just want you to know or think about how you can be a hero. And I think a good way to be a hero is to help your friends. Even when they are not expecting you to help them, that's a great way to be a hero. And you know what I love about reading? I love to put myself in the other guy's shoes. I love to see how another person might see the world. That's one good thing about reading. And you know, in these days, if you find yourself at home, stuck indoors maybe, with nothing to do, something you can do is write about it. I'm sure somebody would love to read it. Gracias. This is Sonia Manzano saying adios.